also to know that because of motive and opportunity, that is the, no the advanced knowledge of the World Trade Center attack, and, and we knew the, the method of the, the attack and the target, then and, and coupled with the long threats, the long-term threats of uh, war against Iraq, Okay, they, 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 this this goes. You know, this was not at the very end. This was at the very beginning, and for several months, this had been known that it, if when this attack went down, that would be the response. That creates the motive and the opportunity to wire the building with detonation with with explosives. Yeah. Okay, and so once you understand that both of those things happened, it's not an accident that somebody just happened to detonate the World Trade Center. Yeah. This was this was a they wanted to maximize the impact because if they if the, the the quote the quote problem <laughs> problem and I'm putting quotation marks around that with a terrorist attack is that it's very sensational, but most terrorist attacks are not highly lethal. Yeah. We have exaggerated them. The first World Trade Center attack had five deaths. Right. The world the, the USS Cole had twelve deaths. Right. And and so okay, so so you know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Do you believe the towers that day uh, might have been held artificially low? Uh, you know, was there some kind of warning to people in the towers themselves? Because, you know, a good point that was brought up uh, a couple times, you know, that I've heard was you don't necessarily see, you know, just thousands and thousands of people running out of the building or anything. Seems how the planes were hit, you know, uh, at, at an upper level of the building. Um, you know, I know a lot of people made it out, but uh, do you have any information on that? Well, but, but think about a controlled demolition. Yeah. It's very interesting that the buildings collapse right it, within a short time span after the 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 the, uh, the planes hit them. That's unnatural. Right. I mean, there's there's no buildup of 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 damage that, that just that's of structural damage and they don't topple to the side it you know g given that that the, the buildings were hit on the upper end it should have been that that you know there may have been like some like uh, some some concrete falling to the side you know the, the way it, it could have could have kind of toppled with steel girders sticking up that you know up for you know 70 floors mm -hmm. okay none of that happens what happens instead is that all the people leave the building and before they can go back in, the building is detonated. Yeah. Yeah. See? They're all out of the building or, or there were still three thousand right. three thousand type A personalities who didn't leave their desk even in a terrorist attack. Mm -hmm. Who would have thunk it? Right. You know, but but really they wait until all the people come to everybody who's coming down comes down, and then they detonate it before anybody can go back in. Yeah, wow, this is this is a a, a lot of interesting uh, information. So, w w you know, when you did get this information that you know they were saying that it, it's possible nuclear devices might be used, uh, I know I got off on this track a little bit, but it's interesting to me. Did I mean was there any information of? What country the, the these nuclear devices would originate from, or or anything of that nature? Uh no, no, no. There there was no explana there there was no explanation of that. We know that Russia is missing uh, nuclear weapons. Yeah. We knew that we knew, but we've always known that. I mean, that's something where uh, in the black market, you know, when you have a, a Russian mafia situation controlling the country and. Uh, but we had you know, we've been monitoring that for you know for for the past decade, mm -hmm. and I do not want to say beyond record. Please, please, nobody out there, please think that I'm saying that the Russians bombed the right. World yeah, Trade there's, Center. There's, there's no, I don't want to be on record saying no, that. There, there's known to be broken arrows, uh, you know, pretty much throughout. Uh, I mean, from what I understand, these things happen, and there and there's it's just like the the Minot. Uh, uh, North Dakota uh, incident where they were transporting the nukes to Barksdale uh, Air Force Base and, and, and some uh, uh, nuclear tip uh, M80 
uh, nuclear-tipped warheads came up uh, missing. So pretty interesting. We're going to break. We're uh, with Sue's Her website is extremeprejudiceusa.wordpress.com. Uh, her book is Extreme Prejudice, The Terrifying Story of the Patriot Act and the Cover-Ups of 9-11 in Iraq. Y- you know, uh, for everyone that's listening, you know, this this is, uh, uh, I mean, the whole 9-11 thing, you know, it's starting to uh, come out more and more in the mainstream, uh, you know, just, you know, some of the things that went on, of course, because the, the corporate media has been lying to us for so long. Uh, and Susan, I know you, you want to really talk about this. You know, what was Iraq's reaction to the 9-11 attacks from what uh, you were told? I was the first person directly at the Iraqi embassy to, to, to go to the Iraqi embassy and confront Iraqi diplomats with a demand for sympathy, uh, commiseration for 9-11. Let me tell you what they said. And I'm being, this is a debriefing. Think of it. I'm being honest. This is going to upset some people. The Iraqi reaction was, you, this is his word, this was the, the words of the diplomat Sali Mahmoud, Susan, you knew about, you meaning me, you knew about 9-11. You kept telling us about this attack for months. We have learned about all of this from you. So why, Susan, didn't you stop it? Why did you let this attack happen to your own people? You allowed your own people to die. Why is that? And he said, I will, this is Salim Mahmood, this is, this is an actual diplomatic exchange. This is not hypothetical. This is what he actually said to me. And he said, I will tell you why the United States allowed its own people to die. You allowed your people to die because you want to go to war with us and you were willing to kill your own people in order to do it. So he, he, he said, he that is disgusting. You are a disgrace. And then you come here and you demand our sympathy. Our, your people need sympathy from you. You should ask God for forgiveness. <laughs> Wow. So, you should ask God for forgiveness. So he called out, uh, you know, that it, it was the potential false flag, though, or something? I mean, did did he gather that, uh, you know, uh, something else was involved? I mean... Uh, yep. He said, he said, uh, uh, I said, well, you know, there's starting to be talk about Iraq's involvement with 9-11. He said, it is the Mossad that says that. Hmm. And it will win. And I said, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and he said, he said, we would never do something like this. We only, we learned of this attack. And he kept, and the Iraqi answer to 9-11 was, this was, this was a, and again, ladies and gentlemen who are listening, this is, this is what it means to be an asset. An asset is in the, is in the immediate room, is in direct contact with the events. So this is not a, something from a report that I read. This is not uh, a hypothetical conversation. I am describing the actual Iraqi reaction to this, and that is, you knew, Susan, you told us about it. You've been talking about this for months. Why didn't you stop it? I will tell you, you didn't stop it because you, the United States has decided to, to declare war on, uh, on Iraq. And you are looking for an excuse. And therefore, you let your own people die. You should ask God for forgiveness. And do not come and complain to us. Wow. That was his reaction. Hmm. So, uh, you know, what did Iraq... Uh, attempt to contribute to the to the 9/11 investigation, uh, and what was lost for the United States and the and the global war on terrorism when the U.S. refused to accept their help. This is very significant. Iraq had been for years one of the best sources on anti-terrorism in the Middle East. 
people. Uh, he hated, excuse me, Saddam hated Islamic fundamentalists. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was, he persecuted them. You know, we know this, in fact, because George Bush cited it as a, as a justification for the war. Uh, he was very harsh on the fundamentalists. So, for him, for his government, politically they were shrewd enough to realize that anti-terrorism was one of their strongest suits. So, after even before 9/11, which I'm, I'm going to have to make a, in my book it's explained, and I don't have time for this right now. But after the U.S. test coal a year earlier, the United States and the CIA, through my back channel, had confronted Iraq with a demand to send an FBI or Interpol or Scotland Yard task force into Baghdad with authorization to conduct terrorist investigations and make arrests. Mm-hmm. And when you read my book, you'll understand why. Mm-hmm. Um, but but uh, they, they wanted to make sure that Iraq was not a, a, uh, a hub for terrorists and that Saddam was complaining that terrorists were trying to get into his country and that as quickly as he could, as he could identify them, his government and his mohabarat were deporting them. So we said, well, we need to be able to get in there and stop them from setting up a base. And if you cannot control your borders, then you have an obligation to let the international community do it. And Saddam said, yes. Hmm. So before 9-11, by about February of 2001, or March, February, March, Saddam has already agreed to this. And then after 9-11, after this, this very nasty response to 9-11, which is scathing, it was, it was a scathing response, um, we brought up the issue again, and Iraq quickly agreed to allow the FBI to come in, and Iraq put more on the table, because they recognized this was their moment. They were not going to lose this to George Bush. They were like, hey, we, we'll contribute. Oh, yes, we've got something to give you. We will give you financial documents on early al-Qaeda figures, okay? The financial documents would show where the pipeline was. Now, uh, a lot of the radio uh, hosts are starting to pick up on the fact, and this is very important, that heroin trafficking is one of the primary currencies of terrorism. It's coming out of the of the Bakaa Valley and out of the Taliban and the the the, the, the poppy fields of Afghanistan, uh, and so you know all these jihadis have have an ulterior motive, yeah. which is. They're, they're, they're heavily connected into organized crime. And it has nothing to do with religion at all. And it's, it's kind of a perversion of Islam, if you want my personal opinion. Um, but they're, they're using, they're, they're, they're exploiting Islam, but really they're, they're, they're crime, they're criminal figures. Um, and not everybody that right now, but but the heroin trafficking is the currency of terrorism. And so, Saddam was willing to give us financial records that would help us shut down two things. We would be able to shut down the the heroin trafficking profits, and we would be able to shut down finances for terrorism. And at the same time, Saddam was saying that he had proof of a Middle Eastern link to the Oklahoma City bombing and the 1993 World Trade Center attack. Now, in my book, I go into this at length, and I explain how the, how uh, Ramzi Youssef, who was in the mastermind of the 1993 World Trade Center attack, was meeting with Terry Nichols in the Philippines in several months before 